MGM Northfield Park presents The Rizzo Show. And now, your host, Tony Rizzo. Hey now, hey! Look at me, oh, look at our, hey, it's a makeshift set, kids. We're getting five million, we're getting a brand new $5 million set for Fox 8 News. So in the meantime, we're at Grandma's house, which I kind of like. Welcome, everybody, I hope you're doing well. Second half of the Indian season underway. There are plenty of decisions to be made. And the big question is, will the tribe be buyers or will they be sellers? Mark your calendars. The MLB trade deadline is the 31st. That is 17 days away. Now, unlike years past, you will not be able to trade players after that day. In the past, you have been able to do that. This year, you are not able to do that because the rules have changed. So whatever the Indians do, they're going to have to live with for the rest of the season. Let's start with starting pitcher Trevor Bauer. Boy, you read the New York newspapers. You think that Trevor Bauer is already in pinstripes. Are you willing to trade Bauer? The hottest rumor now has him going to the Skankies for Clint Frazier. Do you know who Clint Frazier is? We drafted him years ago and traded him to the Yankees. So is Bauer a better pitcher than Frazier is an outfielder? Everybody knows the Indians would love an outfield bat. There is also another trade rumor involving Bauer and the Brewers. This time it's second baseman Keston Hura. Uh, and a third involving Bauer with the Royals. Listen, there are a ton of rumors out there. Bauer is eligible for arbitration in 2020. Now, I bet you're probably asking yourself, hey, why are the Indians going to trade Trevor Bauer if they're in the middle of a pennant race? Number one, the Indians feel like they can get good value for Bauer now. Maybe not the same value they could get after the season. Trevor only wants to sign a one-year deal, and his arbitration is going to be huge. 15 20 million dollars next year the Indians cannot afford that but the Indians feel like they're going to get value back also to help them now in other words they could get a prospect or two but they'll probably get a major league player that can help them down the stretch now speaking of pitchers another pitcher perhaps on the trading block is Brad Hand I am hearing though that the Indians would like to hold on to Hand they have him under contract for another two and a half years He's making six and a half million, which is a bargain for a closer of his stature. Seven million in 2020. Final years were 10 million bucks. That's a very friendly contract. But if you are in a pennant race, you are going to have to use your closer. You're going to have to have a guy that can shut teams down. I feel like Bauer could be dealt, but I don't think the Indians are going to deal hand. Let's stay tuned. And I know there's going to be a backlash if the Indians trade Trevor. But remember, they're trying to get some value for this year. They need bats. You know, who's ever scouting pitchers for the Indians deserves a raise. Because I don't know where they're finding these guys. Shane Bieber went from uh, didn't make the team to all-star MVP. The Indians, I don't want to say don't need pitching, but they have a lot. If Clevenger, I know he didn't win for Friday, but if Clevenger comes back and looks strong, I suggest that the Indians do deal power, but keep Brad Hand. So, should they make a deal? Let's talk about this because it's going to have a bad look. Team in a pennant race dealing one of the best pitchers, in the, especially if you trade them to New York. How about this? What if the Indians trade Bauer to New York and then we've got to play New York in the playoffs? That would not be good. What's going to happen in the second half? Let's talk about it. A big question mark is ace Corey Kluber. Will he make his return? There are reports out this weekend that he's throwing a bullpen session. He's expected to be out until at least the end of August maybe even September, but he could be back if the Tribe makes a run in October. Uh, bullpen session over the weekend rumor doesn't really get me excited. He's still got a long way to go. And if the Indians reach the postseason, Bauer could be in play because if Bauer's trade, I should say uh, uh, a lot of people will be in play, but Bauer gets traded, all bets are off. The other thing is Cookie Carrasco. We don't know about him as well. So I think uh, the health of those two pitchers might decide the fate of Bauer. All right, what about Jose Ramirez? Jose, I love you. You know I do. But he has had a miserable first half, folks. Sometimes it looks like he's going to snap out of it, and then suddenly he goes back into a slump. And what's he hitting? Not even a deuce and a quarter at the moment. He only has seven home runs. In the first half last year, he had 24. Not quite sure what's going on there. I don't think it's injury-related. I do think pitchers have uh, figured him out a bit. 
Well, let me just say this. If the Indians are going to go to the playoffs, and if the Indians are going to do anything in the playoffs, let's face it. Ramirez has to be the player he was for the past two years and not the guy we've seen in the first half. The other one, Carlos Santana. Is he going to stay hot in the second half? I believe he will. Santana loves Cleveland. I was talking to uh, Terry Francona uh, during All-Star Week. By the way, great job, Cleveland. I want to say great job. City was unbelievable for All-Star Week. All my national friends were blown away at how beautiful Cleveland is and how much fun they had and what a great host city we were for the All-Star game. Makes you feel real proud, doesn't it? Getting back to Santana. He loves Cleveland, and I know Terry Francona loves Santana. When he came back here earlier this year, Carlos said, I'm home, and I'm glad to be home. He hits well at home. Most of his home runs are at home, and he has been the spark. Where would we be without Silos hitting the ball the way he is? All right, whatever happens with the Tribe, we've got the best guy in charge, and that is manager Tito Francona. Um, in talking to Terry earlier in the week, I can almost assure you that this is going to be the last job he'll ever take. The Indians have probably the best manager in all of baseball. And how about the adversity that he has faced this year? It has been unbelievable. Injuries, one of his pitchers has leukemia. The tribe's gone through everything. But you know what? Haven't been on a big losing streak. Somehow keeping their head above water. I know this weekend was big with the Twins. But Terry is the influence that keeps that clubhouse together. I hope he never retires, man. I could. I'd love to see him manage here for another 10 to 15 years. I know he just fell off the couch right now, didn't he? Tribal host the Tigers. Yeah, bring in that crappy team starting tomorrow night. Again, the trade deadline, kids, is July 31st. Coming up. Are you ready? We're going to spin the wheel. You won't believe our topics. And I hope you're hungry. I've got Italian food for you. Authentic, rustic Italian. Stay tuned. Hey now, welcome back everybody. Hope you're doing well. Oh, it's one of my favorite segments right now, kids. It is time to spin the wheel. Here we go. I don't know what the wheel is. I'm reacting to this. Oh yeah, NBA moves. Um, are we playing fantasy basketball? The, I went on vacation for a couple weeks and the NBA totally changed. The good news is we have no idea who's gonna win the title. Like in the past, it was the Warriors every year. The bad news is Russell Westbrook is, is going to Houston? How many basketballs are they going to be playing with? James Harden's not going to give up the rock to Russ, and Russ ain't giving up. And Kawhi Leonard going to the Clippers is fantastic. I love this move. I think the rivalry between the Lakers and the Clippers is going to be one of the coolest things in the NBA this year. Plus, like I said, we don't know who's going to win. Spin it again. Here we go. Oh, dude. You know what, kids? I, I like Duke Johnson. He's a friend of my radio show. I really, I, he's probably been on more than any other Browns player. He hired Drew Rosenhaus, kids. That means he's going to be out of town. You, you know what we need to ask ourselves at this point? Is it worth, first of all, Duke Johnson isn't going to get you any kind of major draft pick. You'll be lucky to get a sixth, seventh rounder. But at this point, John Dorsey's got to be asking himself, is it worth it just to get the distraction out of here? Like, should we deal Duke? He wants to be traded. He doesn't feel it. I want to remind you, though, Kareem Hunt's not going to be available for eight games, and the, that means that you're going to need Duke Johnson at some point. I think before training camp ends, Duke Johnson will not be a Cleveland Brown. Roll it, baby. Yeah. Next. Oh, my gosh. When is this guy going to leave? Go away. Former Browns coach Hugh Jackson, who was fired last year, went on a radio station in Charlotte and said he's still looking for a job in the NFL. Good luck with that. He said he wants another shot at coaching. He interviewed with the Bengals and the Cardinals to be their offensive coordinator, but he didn't get either job. Look, Hugh's not a bad guy. He's really not. But I think between hard knocks and his record here in Cleveland, He's going to have a tough time getting a job. I could see him maybe being a quarterback's coach or something like that. And, I mean, God bless him. I don't know. We're, we're moving on. By the way, Freddie, I hope you're going to be good. Next! Roll that wheel, baby. <laughs> Phil Dawson. I want Phil. I want Phil. He's a free agent, folks. Would Phil Dawson work in Cleveland? He's 44 years old. And I want to remind everyone, if you had a really good kicker last year, you would have won nine games at least. 
instead of seven. Look, the Browns are going to be competitive. I hope they say they're committed to special teams. I hope they are because a lot of these games come down to the end and you need a reliable kicker. Bring back Phil. Bring back Phil. All right, one more, I think. Is it one more? Three more. Couple more. All right, keep rolling. All right, I love you, Odell, and I know this was, was it Prada? I think it was Prada made him this outfit. What is that? Is, is he going tool time on me? Is that some sort of pouch? People uh, likened it to kangaroo gear. Uh, is he, did he have tools in there? Is he going to go up and work on my roof? Kids, I'm all for fashion, and I love all the designers. I wish we could afford more of them. But I don't know. I thought that was a bad look. It looked like a vest, and it looked like he was just going to go work on my gutters at some point. I do like the hair, though, babe. He trimmed it up real nice. The beard looks good. He got rid of the frosted lettuce. I kind of like it, I must say. All right, one more roll. One more, please. Give. Thank you, sir. M more than one? Man, oh! John Daly wants to play in the British Open. Now, he was at Firestone. I was out there this weekend. He was at Firestone. John's using a cart because he has arthritic knees and everything. They allow him to use a cart on the senior tour. He wanted to play the British Open, but they said, if you do, no cart. So I guess John is not going to be playing in the British Open. That's a shame. He was a lot of fun out at Firestone this weekend on the Seniors Players Championship. Uh, the 53-year-old said he will take his talents to Kentucky and play in the Barbersall Championship, where he will be allowed to use a cart. Just keep it going, baby. I'll do this all night long. Roll that wheel, although I got, I got to get to my restaurant. One more. Oh, one more. Now it's one more. Starbucks says they will stop selling newspapers in September. You know what? They used to sell New York Times, Wall Street Journal, USA Today. I feel bad because a lot of my friends work in the newspaper business. And let's face it, everybody's getting their information online today. It's a tough time to be working at a newspaper. I always used to love to read the paper when I was a kid. I still do occasionally. Oh, how the times, they are changing. Coming up, special edition of Riz on the Road. And maybe a little concerto for you. We're in search of Italian, stay tuned. Welcome back. It's the Rizzo Show. Time now to hit the road. That's right. We're going to go do a Riz on the road. We were looking for authentic Italian. You've seen this guy before. He used to own a place in Beechwood, but he's moved to the south side. And I'm telling you, it is worth the trip. Check out Valenti's. Folks, welcome to a very special edition of Riz on the Road. Today, we're in search of fine Italian food. I've got a guy who's owned clubs in New York and Chicago, some of the finest supper clubs in the country. He has moved from Beechwood to Broadview Heights, and today we are at Valenti's. Let's find Milo after I finish this in B minor. Well, Milo, tell me what you've got here. First of all, you've got a really beautiful contemporary style restaurant. I love the bar, I love the look of the bar. You got seating outside? Yes, we have a patio, a smoking patio to, to the right, and uh, you can smoke cigars and cigarettes, whatever you want to smoke. And are you, are you going to hire me at the piano bar? Yes. That, uh, you got the we're piano bar? trying to get Rizzo to come and sing and yeah. play the piano. Well, yes, it's for course. very special guests only. Now, how about the food? Uh, what do I, I always love when you tell me, this is Italian food that Italian people eat, right? This Explain is the, that. This is rustic Italian food. This is a combination of foods that developed through the years with being an Italian growing up in an Italian neighborhood, the only thing Italian guys fight about is not the women, it's the food that their mother makes, their aunt makes. So <laughs> that's what we fight about. So you wanted yours to be the best? I had ancestors across Italy, of course, uh, grandparents from four different regions. So my favorite foods are from Southern Italy. Mm. The Calabrese style food mm. is rustic Italian. The Sicilian style food is my favorite yeah. because it's spicy, it's tasty. and 
it's rustic Italians like five ingredients or less. It's just sim very simple food. Adam Boker is my chef. No, Adam, he is studied under some impressive people. Yes, he uh, studied under, he went to the CIA and he uh, worked with Mario Batali in New York City. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, were able to migrate him here to Cleveland and he's now learning to showcase his foods here. Beautiful, time for us to get in the kitchen. Boy, I feel at home right now in this kitchen. First of all, Milo's with us and Chef Adam is here. Adam, explain to everybody what we're gonna be making. So we are going to make zucchini blossoms. So if you look inside these flowers, right. there is a little... Yellow thing? Yeah, it's like a, my, a little pollen. Am I pulling it out? Yeah, you're gonna grab it and you're gonna pull it out. Okay, Okay. pull that out. Once we have that out, right. we're gonna take this. Right. Now what is this? It looks this like cannoli a, filling. It is not cannoli filling. We'll have cheese? some of that later. This is a ricotta cheese, oh, ah. risotto, oh. parmesan cheese, oh my god, and pecorino cheese. Oh my, that's every cheese under the sun. Now what? Now dip it. Dip it into this. Just batter. one single dip. Yeah, just get it covered. Get it all covered. Get guys. it all now covered. Now you use the stem as a handle. Here we go. All Swirling right. it around. What yep. is in there? So this is just flour, water, and yeast. Okay, and then we're going to throw it? Yep, no, we're not going to throw it. We're going to dip the end of it. If we throw it, we're going to have some problems. <laughs> Let's just put the, the end in there. All right. Swirl it around. Swirl it around. All right. Oh, once that. it starts to solidify, then you can let go. Okay. Solidifying now and detached cable. It's a and Star so Wars reference. It stays floating. That way we don't have it sticking at the bottom. You did a perfect job with that one. Okay, how long will this go? This will go until we get a nice uh, GVD, golden brown and delicious. And that's just one of the beautiful appetizers they have here. Folks, we've seen a lot of feasts in over five years of doing Riz on the Road, but here at Valenti's, this may be one of the best of all time. Milo, I don't know how we're gonna eat all this, but. Marie, explain, first of all, is that the thing I made? Yes, those are the zucchini blossoms. Oh, I gotta taste this. If I made it, I gotta taste it. Absolutely. Oh, it melts in your mouth. Excellent. And then up front we have our famous Valenti's meatballs. Okay, now the Secret family recipe. Yeah, Milo, explain. That's a family recipe. Yes, it is. Um, that comes from your family, your mom? It comes from my grandmother from uh, Terramina. Very nice. And uh, folks, I'm gonna tell you right now, for my money, best eggplant in the city. You used to make it 12 layers, it's seven yeah. layers now. Actually, Frank Sinatra liked it 12 layers, so we used to make it 12 layers. Well, I'll eat it seven layers, 12 layers, any way you've got it. Quickly, seafood? Seafood, pescatore, so white wine butter, shrimp, calamari. It's affordable, get here again, we're on 82, Broadview Heights, it's Valenti, you will not be disappointed, and now, bon appetit. Bon appetit. We are gonna eat. Milo, thank you, Marie, thank you. Oh, my mouth is watering. Uh, Volentes opens at 4, and they are uh, open uh, Monday through Saturday. They're closed on Sundays. If you're also looking for something fun to do on Sunday, you know where to go. One of our favorite spots, MGM Northfield Park. Let's see what's happening. There's a new show in town, Northeast Ohio, and we brought the spirit of Las Vegas with us. Win a 2019 Jeep Wrangler during our nine Jeeps in nine days giveaway in July. Earn one entry for every point earned from July 1st through July 13th. M Life Rewards members earn three times bonus entries on Thursdays. Drawings are held every Tuesday and Friday in July at 9 p.m. Introducing TAP at MGM Northfield Park. Enjoy comfort food, pub classics, and a large selection of Northeast Ohio craft beers. Don't miss all of your favorite entertainers performing live at MGM Northfield Park. Don't miss the ultimate Johnny Cash tribute, Terry Lee Goffey on July 20th. Then laugh it up country style with Rodney Carrington on July 27th. Get up close and personal with the La La's Burlesque Show in the Neon Room July 19th and 20th. Tickets available at the box office or Ticketmaster.com. Take a Vegas vacation without leaving the state. MGM Northfield Park. Las Vegas is here. Just having fun with myself tonight. Hey, don't go anywhere. And by the way, I, when is Big Chuck and Little John going to run the sketch, that I, uh, sketch I was in with them? That's what I'm waiting for. Stay tuned for our good friends, Big Chuck and Little John. <laughs> I can't do it like Mike did. Coming up next. All right, Browns fans, get ready. Because training camp is almost here. 
And then, of course, we have one of the biggest seasons in the history of the Browns. Now, training camp sold out, so I hope you got some kind of ticket. Browns are telling me about 4,500 per session in Berea. And yes, there will be chance of Super Bowl, Super Bowl in 56 days, kids, until the season is ready. Now, I know anticipation for the Browns is really high, but let's all just take a deep breath. We're not going to fan scared this year, though. I know a lot of people out there are worried that this could collapse and turn into a, a mess. Don't, don't think that way. This is New Cleveland. These are the New Browns. Thank you for joining me. Good to be alive. Good night, everybody. Hey, Dad.